I think what I would say is that it's safer to have it than not to have it and that any level of protection is desirable. And the way I treated it was a bit like the flu vaccine. You know, I remember a conversation with my consultant haematologist a few years ago after treatment about the flu vaccine and they encouraged me to get it because a level of protection was better than none. Um, so that's what I would encourage people to get it on that basis. Yeah, I mean, everything we do in medicine is risk versus benefit. And I'll give you a personal example. So my mother, who's nearly 80, um, she actually had an extremely rare complication of a flu, well, we think probably of a flu jab that she had about eight years ago. Uh, it's a very rare, but quite serious neurological complication. Um, so she is understandably a bit apprehensive about having another vaccine, but um, the chance of that coming back is very, very small, where her risk if she were to get COVID is relatively high. So I'm very much advising my mother to, to have the COVID vaccine, um, and she's actually perfectly happy uh, to have it. So, you know, it's, it's risk benefit that the, the risks of these vaccines to the vast majority of people is tiny, whereas the benefit, particularly for those clinically vulnerable, elderly, comorbid, et cetera, is really relatively high. So, um, you know, the default really should be to have it. Well, my answer would be that the trial for the Pfizer vaccine was 40,000 people. There's no strong safety signal. Since that trial, we've had a million people vaccinated with the Pfizer vaccine, at least, probably more than that. Because, I mean, in fact, if you think Israel, I mean, you're talking several million people have been vaccinated with the Pfizer vaccine. And if there was a strong safety signal, we would know about it. There isn't. And if you get COVID and you're over 80, you have a 10% chance of dying. That is a very significant risk. And you know, the, the, the relative risk for the, the sort of the blood cancer group in the 70-year-old, I think, is about 2%, something like that, of, of mortality if you catch COVID. So compared to a, a almost negligible chance of a serious side effect, there's no question. I think I'll take the cop out answer and just say, actually, yeah, all the previous three answers from Teresa Graham and Jeremy just sum it up completely. You know, there's the risk benefit, there's the, you know, the likelihood of getting COVID and the complications that you have of that at whatever age it is relative to what the vaccine will give you is, is you know, is, is negligible in terms of vaccine. Um, and then, you know, with Teresa's point of, you know, even if you suspect that you may not, it may not be that great for you to have a vaccine, it may not be as good for you, any benefit is better than no benefit whatsoever. So no matter what you do, just just go for it. There's no, you know, for me, I speak to my parents who are, you know, in their late seventies, and thankfully they just see it as, yeah, I just have to have it because the risk of getting COVID at their age and having serious issues with it is just too great. 